Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a mucinous cystic neoplasm of the pancreas. At low magnification, here is the benign pancreatic parenchyma, and this is the cystic tumor, and here is some peripancreatic fat. Let's have a quick recap of normal pancreatic histology. We can see that the pancreas is composed of these lobules of SNR cells, and these SNR cells form grape-like rounded structures, or SNI, and these cells produce our digestive enzymes. They are the exocrine component of the pancreas. We can see also some of these paler nests or islands of cells, and these are the islets of Langerhans, which form the endocrine component of the pancreas. The digestive enzymes are secreted into the pancreatic ductal system. We can see here a small duct, and these small ducts successively join up into larger ducts. For example, here we can see the pancreatic duct, which is lined by very uniform, bland appearing cuboidal to low columnar epithelium. Now let's move to the area of pathology. And here we can see one of the locules of this cystic neoplasm and the epithelium lining the cyst locule is columnar. The nuclei are very basal and polarized and in this area they are extremely uniform. The columnar cells have abundant cytoplasm with this pale pinkish to sometimes bluish or grayish mucin within the cytoplasm. In many instances, these cells produce mucin, so usually in the intact specimen, there is abundant mucin filling up the locules, but this drops out during the cutting up of the specimen. So this area shows mucinous epithelium, which is low grade because the nuclei are small, uniform, and polarized to the basal aspect of the cell. Let's look at another section from the same tumor. Here is another section from the same tumor, and in this section we do not see obvious pancreatic parenchyma, or we do see some residual islets of Langerhans, but we don't see the pancreatic exocrine parenchyma. So here is the cyst locule, and as we move around, again we can see this low-grade mucinous epithelium. But there is another feature that is demonstrated nicely here, and just beneath the epithelium, we can see a very cellular spindle cell stroma. This stroma resembles normal ovarian stroma, and let's just look at it in other areas. Again, we can see the spindle cell stroma, and also as we move down here, the stroma is well demonstrated in this region. This ovarian type stroma is very classical for mucinous cystic neoplasm. There is another cystic neoplasm in the pancreas which also is lined by mucinous epithelial cells and also produces abundant extracellular mucin and that is known as the IPMN or the intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm. That tumor does not have this characteristic cellular ovarian type stroma. And another key difference between IPMN and mucinous cystic neoplasm is that the IPMN is usually connected to the pancreatic ductal system, whereas the mucinous cystic neoplasm is not connected to the pancreatic ductal system. Let's just move along this cyst locule. And here we can see very beautifully the low-grade mucinous epithelium and the underlying ovarian type stroma. In some areas, the epithelium has been denuded. In this area, the epithelium appears to be more atypical, where there is stratification of the nuclei, there is disorganization, the nuclei are larger, more hyperchromatic, 
and also more irregular in outline, and some of the nuclei contain prominent nucleoli, as you can also see here, and this is a very small focus of high-grade dysplasia in this mucinous cystic neoplasm. So there can be a range of dysplasia from low to high, and in a small percentage of cases, there may also be invasive adenocarcinoma arising in mucinous cystic neoplasms. Let's learn a bit more about mucinous cystic neoplasms. These are relatively rare neoplasms that tend to occur almost exclusively in women. And as mentioned, there can be a range of dysplasia from low to high grade or even invasive adenocarcinoma within the tumor. Often these tumors are asymptomatic and they are usually incidentally discovered when the patient undergoes abdominal imaging for other reasons. There is a separate video describing the gross pathological features of mucinous cystic neoplasm. So usually we would see a multi-loculated cyst and this is not connected to the pancreatic ductal system and usually when intact the cyst locules will contain thick viscous mucin there can sometimes be papillary or solid areas in the cyst locules and these must be carefully sampled to look for invasive adenocarcinoma these images and the fully interactive virtual pathology specimen are taken from our free pathology online resource path web Registration is free and you can find the link in this video description. Microscopically, the lining epithelium is columnar and mucinous and there can be a range of dysplasia to low or high grade and occasionally invasive adenocarcinoma. The stroma shows this characteristic cellular spindle cell ovarian type stroma beneath the epithelium and sometimes calcifications can be present. Here is a low magnification picture of the same case that we just saw, showing the epithelium and the underlying cellular stroma. And a high magnification picture, again showing this mucinous epithelium with low-grade dysplasia and the underlying cellular stroma. Here is a picture of ovarian stroma taken from a normal ovary just to show you the similarity between the stroma of the mucinous cystic neoplasm and ovarian stroma. And this is an area which shows focal high-grade dysplasia where there is nuclear stratification, hyperchromasia, enlargement, prominent nucleoli and irregular nuclear outlines. In mucinous cystic neoplasms with low or high-grade dysplasia, the prognosis is excellent after complete excision However, if there is invasive adenocarcinoma, the prognosis is significantly worse. In summary, this is a mucinous cystic neoplasm of the pancreas. This tumor occurs almost exclusively in women, but can rarely occur in men. It is not connected to the pancreatic ductal system, unlike the IPMN. And this tumor is composed of cyst lining epithelium that is mucinous in nature and can range from low to high grade dysplasia. And often we can see a cellular ovarian type stroma beneath the lining epithelium. Thank you.